You want to know how I racked this truck on this lift? It's just a normal lift, two post, four armed. But I want to share with you today how and where I place the arms to lift this truck up safely. And some of the things you need to watch for if you haven't done this regularly, like me, or if you haven't done it at all. But let's raise this truck and I will show you what I do. We're underneath this pickup and it's heavy. Now if it would fall down, you probably wouldn't survive that. So I take extra precaution in making sure that it doesn't come down. There's a few ways you can do this. I'm going to share with you how I do it and how I feel which is the safest if, if you're doing this yourself. There's four pivot points on, on this. You can see this arm right here and then there's another arm right here and then there's one up there right here and then we have one right over here. Okay, where do we place these arms so that you're this, you, you maintain safety to the highest quality? When it comes to placing these arms on this vehicle, you have a couple of options on the back. And I want to show you that. What I've chosen to do is extend my arms out and catch right here in front of this leaf spring so that if something would jerk or, or move a little bit, I know that it isn't going to move. And, and take note on this extension here, it, it is leaning back. Now the front one is leaning forward. The reason this one is leaning forward is simply because if this truck would move forward or backwards, then these can't move because they're working against each other. If you have one forward and one backwards, that gives you a pivot point like this. But like this, it can't move back and it can't move forward. If it's like this, it could go like that. It couldn't go so much like that, but it could go back. Or if you had it like that, it could go forward. So I like to keep these opposite of each other. Now as you notice here, I have the short one up here. And in the back I, had, I have the long ones up, which you can see on the other side there. Let me get that in there for you. You can see I've got the longer ones up. And the reason being for that is I'm not on the square part of the frame the whole way across, which is this area right here. It's flat. Also, on the front, my placement is approximately, there's an arrow here on the, uh, on the frame, I don't know what that's for actually. Let's see if I can get that in there so you can see it. Right there, you can see that arrow. I think, I'm not sure what that's for, but I use that as a reference point. There's one in the front and one in the back. That's probably a good place to jack for jack stands or anything like that if you're just raising the front end. But for me, I use it as a reference point and that's where I like to have my front arms on both sides, driver and passenger. So I know that I've got them equalized on each side. Now on the back, you can see I put that right up against this shackle bracket. It's all welded in, it's good, and you can see how this frame curves up, and that's why I used a longer end, so it would level out. And I even went to the extreme of putting my four foot level on this all the way around, and you know what, it leveled out almost perfectly. Now you don't have to do that, I, that's an extreme. But uh, I wanted to see, since it was the first time for me, 
putting this uh, up. Now, you don't necessarily have to put this one here. You see how this curves up right here? You could come about right in here on the flat part. I've been told by someone that does this all the time that that's, that's a safe location also. But I chose not to go there because I wanted to get these arms spread out as far as I could. I've also been told by the same guy, the further you can get these spread and balance that weight, the more stable the truck will be. But if you wanted to, if your lift wasn't quite uh, long enough to get these arms stretched out, these telescope in and out, uh, you could put it right there also on each side. Now it's very important for me now I don't know if this is something that everybody does too, but I like to put the arms at similar locations on the vehicle. That may not be necessary, but for me it is. Now how do you know when your truck's solid enough or stable enough on the lift to go ahead and raise it? Well, let me show you how I check mine just to make sure. And operating these lifts, you have three basic levers or buttons. Two levers and one button. To way to lower it, you have to pull this down and pull this down and it will lower it. As you can see. Now you heard that click I, um, when I started to lower it, you heard, or take it back up, you heard a click and then when you start to load it, I want to show you something how these work. They got a catch on it for safety. Let's say if you wanted it up about this high, you got to lower it down until it catches on that click and see now that's locked in place on your lift. That's something I didn't realize when I first started using this. And to release it, you have to first raise it just a little bit and then grab this lever right here, pull down on it all the way, and then grab this lever and just let the pressure off. That's letting the hydraulic pressure off the ramps so that the truck will go down. Okay, the first thing I do when I start to lift this up is I get down in my hands and knees and make sure all four brackets are positioned where they need to be. It's a lot up and down for a guy that's got sore shoulders and achy knees and a big belly. Uh, share with me your uh, struggles and the projects and the up and downs that you do. If you're my age, you know what I'm talking about. And if you're not, your time's coming. But share with me, comment about how you struggle with uh, some of the projects that you are doing. There's locking pins on this, and when I get it up to a certain height, I always lower it just a little bit more to make sure that I've got it locked in place. When I hear that click, I stop and I just lower it a little bit. And then I'll show you what I do here. I come back here and I just shake that real good. I mean, if it's going to move, I want to know it before I get it up in the air. And I just shake the heck out of it. Go in the front and I do the same. But that's how I tell if my vehicle is on a lift safe so that I can crawl under it. I got grandkids I want to watch grow up. And I don't want something silly of that truck falling on me in my shop. To rob me of that. So I, I do everything I can to be as safe as I can in this shop.
Well, that's all I have to share about lifting a, a vehicle up on a two post lift. My lift is a rotary lift. It, it's capacity, I don't even know for sure. It's enough to lift these pickups though, as you can see. I appreciate you watching to the end. I hope you share your projects with me and others that are watching this. Some of the uh, mishaps or things that's happened to you while lifting vehicles. I guess I'm a little gun shy on this is because I took my vehicle in several years ago to someone to wor uh, work on it and they actually dropped it off the lift and I end up dragging it out of the uh, uh, repair shop on its side. That wasn't fun. So if you've had an experience like that, share it. I'd appreciate he hearing about it. If you like what I bring each week, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel. Appreciate that. No, notification button will give you or tell you when my videos come out if you want to hear them. If you want to see uh, videos like this, what I want to share with you is I've got an upcoming um, project. I did a seat repair in this, and I, if you want to hear about that seat repair, I encourage you to watch this video right here. Can it be fixed? Sure it can. Can you fix it? You're darn right you can fix it. Until the next one.